and it is now time for member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. I thought I would share my Christmas wish list with you. I'd like to have a safer pedestrian crosswalk on Highway 144 in Dowling. The Minister of Transportation promised to change this dangerous crosswalk before the end of 2018. Therefore, there's only two weeks left. I also wish that the drivers that got their vehicle damaged last summer on Highway 17, just west of Sudbury, would receive compensation. I've hand-delivered five different letters to three different ministers, but so far the Ministry of Transportation continues to blame the contractors who continue to blame the ministry. This has to end. I also wish for an interprovincial agreement to cover hospital emergency transfer while travelling in Canada. You see, Speaker, Dean and Erla Warnborn from uh, receive a $12,000 bill for an air ambulance transfer from one hospital to another for life-saving emergency medical care. I wish the government would help my constituent and fix this loophole once and for all. I wish for that the government would value our midwives by supporting their uh, college and respecting the human rights tri tribunal pay equity decision. I wish they would uh, respect physicians who are without a contract for the last five years five years. I wish that HSN would be funded so that they would have enough money to keep the full breast cancer clinic open. And I wish that all the boil water advisory would not be needed in Northern Ontario, including in Foliet and Gogama, so they would have water to drink. But I have many more wishes, but let me wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, a Speaker. Joyeux Noël et bonne année. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And to you, thank you. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm truly honoured to rise today in this emergency reconvening of the legislature to deal with the impending strike by the Power Workers Union. OPG spokesperson Neil Kelly has indicated that a strike by 6,000 workers at Ontario Power Generation means workers could start a days-long process of shutting down nuclear power plants before potentially launching a strike on January 4, 2019. A strike by the OPG would put the reliability of the entire provincial electricity system at risk. The independent electricity system operator has said that the shutdown of OPG's nuclear and hydroelectric, hydroelectric facilities could occur in approximately three weeks, and at that point, Ontario would not have the generation needed to meet consumer demand and customers would begin losing power. The IESO will take every action available to delay and mitigate the impact. However, these actions will not be enough to prevent significant losses of power. In my riding of Carleton, I've already seen the devastating impact left due to prolonged lack of power. Back when the tornado hit Dunrobin and the Ottawa area, we lost electricity, and people across my riding were adversely affected. That includes senior homes, affordable housing and subsidized housing, people living on life support, isolated and vulnerable families, and some pumps wouldn't work either. With sub-zero temperatures in the dead of winter, Carleton's residents need electricity. It's not a luxury, Mr. Speaker. It is a necessity of life, and without it, people are at risk of disease and God forbid, Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to ask this government one simple question. Should the care of our children, our babies, the ones whom we have a sacred duty to care for and protect, be more about the provider's ability to make more money than the quality of care we are obligated to provide? Speaker, in what this government calls the Restoring Ontario's Competitiveness Act includes loosening critical protections for our children in return for the vague sales pitch of making Ontario more, competitiveness, yep. more competitive. Are our memories that short or our hearts that cold? How can this government forget the criminal negligence that caused the death of two-year-old Eva in an overcrowded childcare in Vaughan? What about the nine-month-old Aspen Moore, who died in an unregulated Markham home daycare? Or the precious four-month-old baby that the Toronto Star reported that died in uh, 2014 in an unlicensed care in northwest Toronto? Today, I want to remind this government of some of, the, some of these stories that we must keep in mind before plowing through 
child care regulations. What this government is proposing scraps what little oversight there was in unlicensed and unregulated child care, with zero consultation and no research or evidence to support their changes. Order. We must ask ourselves, is this what open for business looks like? How can we risk the lives of the most vulnerable, our children, the innocent residents in Ontario, in the false claim of competitiveness? Member statements. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, I was honoured to attend the Senior Tamil Society of Peel's annual Christmas, Diwali and New Year's fundraising dinner. The opposition believes that we should turn off the lights this holiday and leave millions in the dark with no lights or lit trees. Mr. Speaker, many seniors approached me yesterday worried that they would be left to freeze in the dark. I ensured them that myself and the government will make sure that this does not happen. I'm proud of the work that the society does for the senior community and helping seniors reduce isolation. We should not isolate these seniors by cutting their hydro, Mr. Speaker. We should provide them with a reliable source of power for heating their homes and keeping them safe. Mr. Speaker, the Senior Tamil Society of Peel are a staple for Tamil seniors in our community and do not deserve to be left in the cold this season. They need hydro to help run their programs, especially this time of the year. Our mission as a government should be to safeguard these seniors and ensure that their homes are safe, warm and lit this holiday season. I hope the opposition will join us in passing legislation quickly and help ensure that Ontarians have the power they need to stay warm and safe this holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Here, here. Member statements, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak out against the federal Liberal government's public safety report, which labels the Sikh community as a current terrorist threat to Canada without providing a single shred of evidence to substantiate this claim. Okay. Sikhs across Canada are outraged of why they're included in this report in the very first place. The federal government has to either prove it or remove it. We need a full explanation from the federal government on why the six were included in this report in the very first place. And if no explanation can be provided, the federal government must take immediate steps to remove any mention of the Sikh community from this report and further apologize to Sikhs across Canada for maligning their name. This is not just about the Sikh community. This is about the protection of racialized communities and their civil liberties. It is unjust for a government to brand an entire community as a threat in the absence of evidence, be it Sikh or otherwise. This is something that we must all stand up to defiantly against. With the rise of racist attacks in Canada, this kind of language is both dangerous and wrong. It has real consequences to the lives of everyday racialized Canadians. I call on the federal government to act now, remove any unsubstantiated claim against the Sikh community or any other community in this report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government has made a decision to recall the legislature due to the looming power workers' union strike. Now, this strike would lead to a shutdown of nuclear power plants and hydroelectric stations, creating an untenable situation where we would face regular power outages. 
Unlike the opposition, our government is taking swift action to prevent this from happening. I believe, given the seriousness of this situation, that Ontarians will agree. Mr. Speaker, I can give Order. this House just a few examples of how the Hamilton area Please. would be impacted by prolonged electricity shortages. DeFasco and U.S. Steel would be facing yet another obstacle on top of the steel and aluminum tariffs that are already creating havoc in the sector. The rapidly growing greenhouse operations in my constituency of Flamborough Glanbrook need a reliable power source, especially as they continue to expand their exports. Their livelihood depends on a reliable power supply. Here, here. The holiday season is a critical time for the many farm markets in Flamborough and Glanbrook. Yep. A long blackout would cause a hefty dent to their bottom lines at the most critical time of the year for their businesses. The same holds true for dozens of small businesses. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of those constituents and fellow Hamiltonians, I will be supporting this back-to-work legislation, and I urge everyone in this House to do so as well. Member statements. The member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It saddens me to return to the legislature today with news that this government is slashing millions of dollars in funding for our schools. After receiving an avalanche of memos on Friday evening outlining multiple cuts, school boards, educators, and parents are all trying to cope with how students will be affected. As it stands, funding for more than a dozen existing programs, including funding for special needs students, still remains uncertain. The programs to be cancelled immediately overwhelmingly targeted at-risk youth. Tutors in classrooms, Indigenous-focused programs, supports for racialized youth, and physical activity programs for both elementary and secondary students. The Focus on Youth program was set up to provide activities for students in areas that are considered underserved by other agencies and help provide important leadership opportunities outside of the classroom. These programs generally serve our most vulnerable and marginalized youth, and our students deserve to know why this government chose to cut those programs. What's more, the timing of this is very concerning. Cutting $25 million to education program grants prior to the completion of these so-called education consultations makes it clear these consultations were a sham. The government has an agenda. It's death by a thousand cuts for public education, Order. and it is students that will suffer. As Maria Rizzo, chair of the Toronto Catholic School Board, said, the government gives us money so we can use it for kids to help them. Anything they take away, they take away from those kids. Kids deserve more resources Order. this holiday season, Mr. Speaker, not less, every day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Brantford, Brant. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. I am pleased to rise today to speak about a unique and special exhibition that is happening in Brantford. Every year, the Glenhurst Art Gallery in Brantford puts on a very special exhibit to celebrate the Christmas season. During the month of December, the grounds of the Art Gallery are transformed by the glow of hundreds of thousands of lights. And this year, on November 30th, the lights of the seventh annual Brantford Lights of Glenhurst were switched on. I had the privilege of attending. People from all over the community can come to take in the many wonderful light displays of this great winter family tradition. Last year, more than 22,000 people either drove through or walked through the display. Running concurrently to the Brantford Lights of Glenhurst is the annual Vibrant Pal Palette Student Exhibit, which exhibits more than 200 pieces of art made by local students. Not only are the lights a celebration of the season, but they also act as an invitation to experience the rest of the gallery and the works of art made by Brantford's young artists. By making electricity more affordable, our government is making it easier for communities like Brantford to put on light shows and exhibits like this one. We are not only making electricity more affordable for Ontario's households, but also promoting our province's vibrant arts and culture. If you would like to visit and experience the Brantford Lights of Glenhurst, they are turned on nightly from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. until January 1st. Admission is free, but donations to the Brantford and Salvation Army food banks are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, 
Rogers Hometown Hockey paid a visit to Chatham Kent. There were all kinds of events for the community happening around all of the hockey games. It was the 11th stop of 25 for the Rogers team. The remainder of these wonderful events throughout this province would be cancelled if the Power Workers Union strike proceeds. Shame. Businesses, community centers, and shelters would all have to be shut down for as long as the strike continues. What about the electric systems used to run Order. fueling stations, home heating and refrigeration? Just imagine the families in my riding and ridings around the province unable to travel this Christmas, stuck in cold houses Order. and food going bad. That leads me to my favorite part of the holidays in southwestern Ontario, Mr. Speaker. It is the food and toy drives put on by the Chatham Goodfellows and, of course, the Salvation Army. They provide hearty meals and gift packages for hundreds of families distributed. I also think of the programs that would be cancelled at the YMCA and other local programs such as free skates for families, all cancelled. Order. The less fortunate family could have been any one of us, including the NDP. I will continue to fight for the safety and prosperity of my constituents. And this is why our government, for the people, is taking action now to secure I apologize to the member for Chatham Kent Leamington for having to stand up in the middle of his presentation because I couldn't hear him because of the standing ovation from his colleagues. That concludes our time for members' statements.